Fuck what society tells you. Embrace chaos. Hello everyone. Hi, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of reaction to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is her life. I'm known as Matt. I'm eating a Kit Kat because someone just gave it to me. And I was like, I have an idea for a gag. Anyway, what's up? So, Buffy, right? Man, kickers are fucking good, dude. We didn't have them in, in the country for like the longest time. And I only tried them for the first time like two years ago. And they're fucking good. Get in sidetrack already. Buffy, right? So last time on Buffy, what happened? We got the Halloween episode with, where it was wacky. But more importantly, we got revealed that Giles actually has like something. Something that he was and, and he maybe stuff he did in the past, which was awesome. We got introduced to a potential pretty confirmed new antagonist that I feel is going to be very important in Ethan. So we not only have Spike and Drew, now we have Ethan as well. The Giles thing is, was fantastic. And also a thing that I forgot to mention and specify at the end of the episode, and mostly it was because I didn't really like it too much, is the fact that Buffy and Angel might be going steady now ish steady ish as much as you can when one is a vampire player and the other is a vampire uh because they did kind of like start smooching and stuff at the end anyway i you heard my thoughts on what i thought about the way relationships are written in the show previous episode i'm not gonna repeat myself i'm just gonna move on past that and hopefully not a lot of people got angry about it and if you did i'm sorry that wasn't my intention anyway this episode i have no idea what we're gonna be doing but i'm excited because they're setting up things for the future with spike and drew and ethan and whatever the fuck is going on with giles or went on with giles i'm very excited about that check out the patreon if you would like to watch early episode reactions as well as full and reactions so you can watch the next two episode reactions already over there or this in full and just support the channel that would help out a lot uh so yeah let us begin buffy the vampire slayer season two episode seven let's go i, I never do this with my left hand Let's go. Wait, is that true? just supposed to pick me up as all. Okay, that's she cool. She want me to walk you home. She has the sweetest voice. So do you. I love her cadence. What will your mummy sing when they find your body? You run, kid. You should oh. be running already. So that's just... Hmm? Run home. Oh! Cool. This episode starting like great. What's up? What's happening? Do you know each other? Alright, this is Steve Good. Remember the song Mummy used to sing me? I remember. Yes, you do. You still don't leave here. Are you siblings? Oh, you'll hurt me. No, you can't. Not anymore. If you don't leave, it'll go badly. For all of us. My dear boy's gone all the way, hasn't he? This is a plot episode, which I'm excited for. He has no idea what's in store. All right. I mean, that looked somewhat intimate, but it wasn't the worst. But of course she saw it. There has to be extra drama to everything. I was about to say, I'm excited because this is a plot episode. And the reason why I can tell it's a plot episode is because they don't pull out the actors for like the main antagonist, unless it's an episode that matters, you know? Like there are some episodes where not even Angel shows up. So no, everyone's, everyone's showing up. I just don't see why everyone's always picking on Marie Antoinette. I can so relate to her. She worked really hard to look that good. So they're like, let's lose some heads. <laughs> That's fair. And Aunt Marie Antoinette cared about them. She was gonna let them have cake. Fun fact, she never actually did say the thing about the cakes. It wasn't her. It is often attributed to her, but she didn't say it. I think it was Jean Jacques. I'm not sure, I think it was them. I'd suggest a box of Oreos dunked in apple juice, but maybe she's over that phase. Who are you? Ford? Hey, Summers. Oh, you're from her you old so? school? Didn't think you'd remember me. Remember you. Duh, we only went to school together for seven years. Okay. You were my giant fifth grade crush. So I don't see Ford becoming part of the cast. So I'm trying to figure out what he's going to be. Victim, antagonist, those really are two options. It was terrible. I moped over you for months. Sitting in my room listening to that divinal song, I touched myself. Of course, I had no idea what it was about. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. This is Ford, my bestest friend of all my friends. Jeez, doesn't she know any fat guys? Oh, that's what that song is about? <laughs> she was still processing it. Sorry, didn't mean I want to process what she processed. She was sitting there confused. That's what she was thinking about. 
it would be interesting if he became part of the cast. I just don't think he will. What'd you do last night? Nothing. Nothing at all. You ceased to exist. No, I mean I stayed in. Red. That's a lie. Oh. Hi. This is Ford. We went to school together in LA. Hey, Angel. Do you want to play? You know, it's getting really crowded in here tonight. Um, I'm a little hot. Do you want to take a walk? Um, sure. That'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, I feel like See, that's. You made him do that thing where he's gone. <laughs> Hit Batman them. <laughs> that didn't sound at all like that was real noises coming from that woman. Yeah? Okay. What's going on? Um. Uh huh. I thought you were just slaying a vampire. What? Wedding a what? Uh, I know, Buffy. You don't have to lie. I I've been trying okay. to figure out the right time to, to tell you. Okay. I know you're the slayer. This is a lot of information. That's mad sus. I don't have to constantly worry that he's going to find out my dark secret. But that's really sus. Because it's not just the fact that he knows you fight some weird monsters. It's the fact that he's like, no, you just killed a vampire and you're the slayer. That's that's not sus. That's just telling of the fact that he knows a lot. And there's only really two people that would know a lot. A direct ally or a direct antagonist. A direct enemy. So which one is he? What is this? Is this a goth vampire bar? True believers, homie. True believers. I can't wait. Right, whatever. I still think I should be on the plan. Is this a vampire cult? Go. People that worship the vampires? Die young and stay pretty. Behind you? You play your wits against mine. He's being possessed. Hundreds of years before you were born. <laughs> Whoa. What the fuck did we just walk into? That was a cool cut. That was really sick. You gonna tell me that I'm jealous? Well, you do sometimes get that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I never used to. 100 years, just hanging out, feeling guilty. I really honed my brooding skills. Yeah, I understand that. When she comes along. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I get jealous. At least he's saying honest. But I know people. And my gut tells me this is a wrong guy. But if there isn't anything weird... Immediately something me. weird. What? Yeah, okay. He's not in them. So he lied. I mean, usually they transfer your grades and stuff, but he's not even registered. Don't tell Buffy what we're doing, all right? You want me to lie to her? It's Buffy. Everyone's lying to each other. I feel like I'm understanding the title of the episode. Buffy's smart. Somewhere. She should be able to realize that this guy is mad suspicious. I didn't tell him. Evening. That's Matt Sus. Oh, Charles, yes, think right about then. that. Well, um, just uh, remember, if you go experience this thing called fun, I'll try not to have. He's distracted with Miss Callender, so it's not gonna like think too hard about it. Maybe we're really depending on Willow and, and Angel here. I feel like this is a cult that worships vampires or some shit, and they're letting themselves be possessed by vampires and shit. And of course, the main enemy of vampires is the Slayer. So <laughs> you got one chance to live. Tell me what I want to know, and I'll let you go. Ooh. Okay, yeah, so... All right! We blend right in. In no way do we stick out like sore thumbs. Let's look yeah, around. we're not goth yes, enough. Sure Ever seen a thumb and gone, wow, that baby is sore. You have too many thoughts. That's great. A plus dialogue. Hopefully they won't get possessed. Vampire. I don't know what the, the cause of the possession is. They who walk with the night are not interested in harming anyone. Oh, yes, this is a cult. They are the weird creatures cult. creatures above us. Exalted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is interesting. It's very interesting. You don't have to be so confrontational about it. Other viewpoints than yours may be valid, you know. I've seen this type before. Okay. They're children making up bedtime stories of friendly vampires that comfort themselves in the dark. Is that so bad? These people don't know anything about vampires. What they are, how they live, how they dress. Hi. <laughs> He's dressed exactly the same way. Honestly, I, I've I've always I've always been interested in in uh, monster trucks. Dude, that would have been so much fun. Was... Who's this? Um, yeah. Okay. She's called Drusilla. That's an old photo. Paramour of spikes. She was killed by an angry mob in Prague. Well, sure. they don't make angry mobs like they used to because this girl's alive. Careful. <gasps> oh. She was the girl okay. that he supposedly killed. Her book. It took one of my books. He said he killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he lied. Said he killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Progression. Well, Bob, if 
she didn't see. I love her. She's so weird. Meet anyone? It's a little off, you two so friendly, him being the enemy and all that. I'll give you a seed if you sing. The bird's dead, Drew. You left it in a cage and you didn't feed it and now it's all dead, just like the last one. That's true. This is so cool. I would totally live here. He just walk in. He's like, I want to be a vampire. You are so cool. Oh, this is great. This will be very useful. I've got something to offer you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the part where you take out a watch and say, I've got 30 seconds to convince you not to kill me. It's traditional. Bro, come on. Well. Quiet, love. <laughs> she can see that he's guy might be useful. Oh, come on. Say it. Oh it's my god. Say it. I hate this guy. He's such a geek. I want to be like you. A vampire. I've known you for two minutes and I can't stand you. I don't really feature you living forever. Can I eat him now, love? I'll give you the Slayer. We found this address, we checked it out with Xander and it turned out- And Xander? Yeah. They're doing a lot of stuff out her back. Everybody's in. Who's Drusilla? And don't lie to me, I'm tired of it. Some lies are necessary. For what? Sometimes the truth is worse. Do you love me? What? Do you? You need to say yes in order for him to tell the truth. This is serious. I did a lot of unconscionable things when I became a vampire. Including? Drusilla was the worst. Oh. Obsession of mine. Okay. First I made her insane. Okay, you Killed psychological- she loved. Okay, psychological Visited torture. Visited torture on her I could devise. Okay. The day she took her holy orders, I turned her into a demon. All right. I asked for the truth. Now you know why he didn't want to tell you. It's pretty bad. Or it's part of some society that reveres vampires, practically worships them. She can't trust them. Well, Buffy knows the truth now. All right, she's going to be ready, so. It's going to be fun. Well, at least I'm like 99% sure that guy's gonna die this episode, so I'm happy about that. He was too annoying to, for him to live. No, it's really not. All right. It's kind of drafty in here. I just couldn't wait till tonight. I'm rash and impulsive. It's a flaw. A little bit. I really don't think you'd understand. I don't need to understand. I just need to know. Just, just be honest. I'm gonna be one of them. All right. You wanna be a vampire? Thank you for the honesty. I'm going to. You are going to offer them a trade. Yep. I don't think I want to talk anymore. Yeah, well, I still feel awfully chatty. You were going to give them me tonight. Once it's closed, it can only be open from the outside. As soon as the sun sets, they'll be coming. So they're locking her here. You're going to die. And the only hope you have of surviving this is to get out of this pit right now. And my God, could you have a dorkier outfit? Thank you for saying it. These people aren't going to get changed, are they? The rest of them, they're just fodder. Yes. Technically, yes. But I'm in. I will become immortal. It's not how it works. You die, and a demon sets up shop in your old house, and it yeah. walks, and it talks, and it remembers that. your life, but it's not you. You're dead. It's better than nothing. Ford, these people don't deserve to die. Well, neither do I. I got maybe six months left, and by then, I what see. they bury won't even look like me. I'm sorry, Summers. Did I screw up your righteous anger, Riff? Does the nest of tumors liquefying my brain kind of spoil the fun? I had no idea. But what you're doing is still very wrong. Yes, it is. Okay, well, you try vomiting for 24 hours straight because the pain in your head is so intense. And then we'll discuss the concept of right and wrong. These people are sheep. Still wrong. They want to be vampires because they're lonely. Miserable. I'm bored. I don't have a choice. You have a choice. You do. You don't have a good choice, but you have a choice. You're opting for mass murder here, and nothing you say is going to make that okay. That's you true. I need to justify myself to you? I think this is all part of your little fantasy drama. A little bit. Isn't this exactly how you imagined it? You tell me how you've suffered, and I feel sorry for you. Well, I do feel sorry for you, and if those vampires come in here and start feeding, I'll kill you myself. You know what, Summer? I really did miss you. Are they here? Lord, help me stop this. 
All right. His ugly death come to play. Well, I hope it's like Angel and the gang. Well, is here. Did they think that the vampires would be like beautiful, handsome? Just like, oh shit, a monster walked in. Oh, everyone's dying. And she's here too. Nice wire work. Spike. Everybody stop! Mm hmm Now you let everybody out or your girlfriend fits in an ashtray. Let them go. It's a good threat. Okay. And now run. Well, where's the door knob? I feel like several of these people would be like, actually, I was down with that. They can come back when they're gone. Come back for what? For the body. Mm hmm. There was only one person left behind. I'm stuck in a basement. Well, that wasn't on him, but still, they're gonna kill him. I handed her to you. But they're gonna kill yes. him. I suppose you did. He did do everything he was supposed to. What about my reward? Guess what? Doesn't matter. Because that's his reward. That's what he gets. Yep. I like this drama. This is a good drama. It'd be simpler if I could just hate him. I think he wanted me to. I think it made it easier for him to be the villain of the piece. Nothing's ever simple anymore. I'm constantly trying to work it out. Who to love or hate who to trust that would get exhausting it's just like the more i know the more confused i get does it ever get easy oh well then does it get easy what do you want me to say lie to me <laughs> yes it's terribly simple the good guys are always stalwart and true. The bad guys are easily distinguished by their pointy horns or black hats. And uh, mm -hmm. we always defeat them and save the day. No one ever dies and everybody lives happily ever after. Lie. Oof. Oof. I like that ending. I like that ending because that, that feels like a promise. That he just lied. And that I should be stay on my toes because... This show is not going to be simple moving forward. Okay. Okay, that ending was pretty great. Because, again, I, I just said it, but, like, I feel like that ending was a promise. You know, that I feel like that ending was the show just looking at me dead in the eyes and being like, this shit's going to get, like, real. Like, real soon. So better fucking get ready for it. And I'm not sure if it's... I'm not sure if it will. But, because, like, until it does, I'm not going to, like... Because, okay. So what I mean by when I say this, and this is something that's difficult for you, Buffy fan, watching this uh, video uh, to imagine, because you have been a fan of Buffy for whatever amount of time, and you know everything that's about to happen. But me, I only know the Buffy that I seen on season one, and the first couple episodes of this season. And the only thing I know about moving forward is that people are really hyped for it, right? But... Me, personally, to me, Buffy the Vampire Slayer right now, it's this, like, episodic villain of the week. Uh, I don't want to say generic because it's not, but it's, like, it can be somewhat predictable at times, you know? And this episode, like, right there at the end, it felt like Giles just, like, looked at me and went, like, okay, I know that this is what you're thinking. It's not going to be like that always, you know? And that might as well just have been just the show holding me at gunpoint and being like, someone's gonna die. Just being like, there's gonna be like real shit serious drama and people are gonna die. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, I'm ready for it. You know, any, any day now it's gonna happen. And like, I never, I'm never gonna know if it's gonna be like monster of the week. Like we revived a mummy and Sander fell in love with it episode or if it's gonna be a shit serious episode where like fucking willow dies or someone like you know some some weird shit like that but so far the show hasn't done that yet because like even this episode it felt like it wanted me to feel something 
And in some ways I did, but the thing about this character that they introduced, this guy, God, I forgot his name, Ford, yeah, yeah, Ford. The thing about Ford is that because this show has things that are predictable to it, you know, like due to the nature of how it works, it means that I, when I see Drew or Spike walk into screen, I'm just like, okay, this is going to be a plot episode because they wouldn't get the actors on on this episode if it weren't some an episode that mattered, you know? So previous episode, for example, I was like, okay, something's going to matter because Spike is in it, you know? This episode felt the exact same way right away. And then this guy walked in, this fourth character, and I'm just sitting here like, I'm looking at you, and I don't see you becoming a part of the main cast. Like, I looked at him, and I thought about the... What was the guy's name from episode 1 and 2 that got immediately killed? I was like, yeah, you're the fourth wheel. Um, Yeah, you don't fit the group dynamic. Like, like the group dynamic is pretty solid as it is with, with uh, Buffy, Willow, Sander, and Giles. And I don't think there's any more room for anyone else. You think an argument is calendar sometimes pops in, Cordelia also sometimes pops in, but that's not, they're not members of the main group. They show up sometimes to help the main group. And I think they add a little bit as long as they're not permanently part of the group. So this guy walks in and he's like, I'm really important. I, and Buffy is like, he is really important. He's been my best friend forever. And um, my start trying to develop feelings for him not well not really not develop feelings but trying to go out with him because she was feeling conflicted about angel i feel like i've seen this like five times already but because of all of that i'm just sitting here like okay what are you gonna be are you gonna be a a victim or b antagonist and he was b antagonist and but the thing is that me seeing things that way i am like predicting not with 100 percent accuracy but i'm always like trying to stay ahead of the of the show and i feel like the only time the show has ever like just thrown me for a loop and i was like all right what the fuck was happening is the puppet episode in episode nine and season one which i really enjoyed because i was like confident you know i was just like oh it's gonna be this or it's gonna be that or it's gonna be that i had like a couple options and then the show was like all right never mind it's just like what the fuck is happening and that really threw me off and i was like oh, i really like that I really like that a lot because like this is something that you should be used to by this point if you've been watching more videos on my channel is that I and I put it on the description of the channel by this point I, I changed it a couple weeks ago uh, I like to play detective because I'm I I get bored otherwise you know and that's not just to this show just in general when I play like a story or watch a story anything any piece of media I'm trying to like play detective I'm trying to figure things out you know that's why one of my favorite games of all time is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Banger game. But I'm, I'm trying to like stay on top of things, you know? To me, that's fun. So when I'm watching a show like this, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's what's gonna happen this episode? What's gonna be the mystery? And I am using like meta information, you know? Like for example, actor showing up, uh, making it almost a guarantee that the episode will be a plot episode instead of a villain of the week episode. But that makes it a little bit formulaic. And I feel, and I feel like the show just, just looked at me in the eyes and said, Hey, stop thinking that way. We're going to fucking catch you doing that shit. And that's when like your favorite character is going to fucking die. So fucking get ready. It felt like the show was literally just, just grabbed me by the throat and just went like, Hey, fuck you. Don't do that. And what's funny is that I'm probably going to continue to do that. Because, like, like if the next episode is a villain of the week, monster of the week, wacky, some weird shit happens, and then we fix it and everyone's happy episode, then that would deduct immediately uh, from the ending of this episode. Because it would mean that the show is going to be like, hey... Things are never gonna. Th things are not gonna be easy always. Things are not just gonna be white and black. Things are not gonna be simple, good and evil. And hey, the good guys are never not always gonna win, and everyone's gonna be happy in the end, and things are gonna be fine. And then immediately next episode goes back to that formula. If it's another like episodic monster of the week kind of thing, um, I'm not saying that as a complaint. Uh, and I'm not even sure if it's going to happen, but that's just something that would be kind of funny because it sounds like the show is aware of itself and it might even be aware of me looking at it that way. So yeah, that would be really interesting. I would actually really appreciate if they did that. Uh, if, if moving forward, the show is going to start being like, all right, fuck you. Gotcha. You know, um, don't try 
to figure out what's going to happen because we're going to keep you on the toes. So yeah, I would welcome that. I would welcome a change of, hey, uh, things are not going to be formulaic. But it actually does a little bit of good to me to hear that because that sounds like the show is aware that it has been that in the past. You know, some episodes have been that in the past. Uh, so I like that. Um, anyway, let's talk about actually what happened in the episode. So what was the title of the episode? Lie to me. Okay. I read the title and it was, I was like, oh, it's about lying. And then I watched the episode. And as I was watching the episode, I'm like, everyone's lying to each other. I guess that's the theme. I guess that's, I guess that's what we're doing. Everyone's just lying to each other. And like that, that, that is actually what happened. Like Angel lied to Buffy. Buffy lied to Angel. Willow and Sandra lied to Buffy. Ford lied to Buffy. Pretty much just, just every character just lied to each other. You know, like. Even Giles lied to Miss Calendar. Like, everyone just lied to each other. Sure. Um, but, and in some ways, like, you don't, like, it makes sense how some characters acted here. Like, that's that wasn't something too crazy because, like, I can imagine Buffy. Okay, I've seen that. I feel like I've seen this, like, five times already when Buffy is just like, oh, my God, what is Angel up to? Is there another woman? And then Angel is like, I'm brooding. And then she's like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And then they just don't talk to each other. Like, that's just something I'm tired of seeing, you know, just not non-communicating at all whatsoever, despite both of them being into each other. Especially since, like, last episode we already did that. thing is that in this episode there was an attempt at that. And Angel immediately lied. So then Buffy's like, okay, what the fuck? Then when there's actually a confrontation, like, way later on, Angel tells her the reason. And the reason is actually... It's cool, because we get to learn. So, we learned that Drusilla... Okay. Drusilla's backstory is fucked, and... That makes her a very interesting character. Uh, she's already a very interesting character because I, I like everything about her. Like, she looks so fucking weird. She acts so fucking weird. She talks so fucking weird. And I'm just sitting here like, that's cool. Again, I don't know what the name of the actress is, but I'm pretty sure I already said that before. But like, she's just fucking killing it. She's great at this like weirdo main antagonist vampire thing. Like, she's just killing that role. And Angel explains, okay, Drusilla is the worst thing that Angel has ever done. And I'm just sitting here like, damn. And like, and I was thinking before that, I was thinking like, okay, there is a connection. So I was like, what is the connection? And I was thinking like, maybe she's your sister. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's like daughter. Because you know, like you, you don't age as a vampire, right? So maybe, like maybe he was a dad and he had a daughter and the daughter grew up and then he turned the daughter into a vampire. And that's why they would look like similar age, but the reality is that you don't age. It could be also some weird shit. But no, he said, she's the worst thing I've ever done because he psychologically tortured her by doing all sorts of fucked up shit just for fun. Uh, he like killed everyone around her, just showed her that and just tortured her for like a ton of years. And then eventually she joined, like, I don't remember what he said, but like a holy order or some shit, some covenant. I don't, I don't know exactly what he said. And then the day that she took that, he turned her into a demon. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, like that's Angel just being a fucker. And, you know, like, no wonder he feels super guilty about everything, you know, if he did shit like that consistently. Um... And I like that Buffy asked that, and he was like, do you love me? Because it means that, because, like, he doesn't want to tell Buffy all these things. And it makes sense. You don't want to tell people about all the, like, horrible things that happen in your life that you did. Because, of course, Angel feels guilty. He doesn't want people to see the worst things about him. So, he's not going to tell her that. Buffy wants to know, so then Angel's like, all right, you really want to know if you really love me. Here, here's what's up. And then Buffy's like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like there's a reason why people don't share those things. There's a reason why he lied to you. Like, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to is the fact that Buffy was like, everyone's lying to me. And then Angel was like, yes, I'm lying to you, but there's a reason. He tells her the reason. And then it's like, okay, I understand now. You know, I understand that maybe you don't have to tell everyone everything. You don't have... You can just tell a couple lies, that's fine. But at the same time, that doubles as a, hey, now you can trust each other a little bit more, you know? Because, like, if Angel told Buffy about 
all the like the worst things that he's done, it means that Buffy now knows that, and that she still likes you, which is a big thing. Just like for that relationship, for relationships in general, you know, like when you show someone else like your most vulnerable, your most like hidden, like deep dark secrets or whatever. Like when you do that, and the other person is still cool with you. It means that that person is is down. That person is locked in. That person is like super ride or die with you. Now there should be an even tighter bond between these two. There should be even more trust, you know? Because that's also the thing is that like they look at Angel and they go like, well, he's really mysterious. Like he's he doesn't share a lot of things. And like the reality is that Angel is like that because he's been alive for like 200 years and he has killed people for like 150 of them and he tortured and killed and all sorts of fucked up shit and then he feel like guilty for okay i think it was like 240 and then i think for 140 she he was bad and then he said he brewed for like 100 years i think that's what he said here so yeah he did a lot of fucked up shit and then he re- he gained a consciousness and then he was like shit that was terrible and then he became emo and like you can't fault him for being emo after everything that he's done and like and he said it here like he just secluded himself from society for like 100 years just brooding just on his own makes sense that makes a lot of sense i've also done that not for 100 years but i've done that and then he like he just felt guilty he felt like shit and it's like nothing moves you and then this girl walks in and she makes you care. And then you start feeling all sorts of weird emotions about it. Like jealousy, for example. And the thing about Angel is that that makes him very interesting. Is the fact that, like, he has had moments where he's been jealous before and here. But, like, he doesn't... He's not upfront about it. He doesn't admit things. And here's where this, like, weird psychology of things come in. Because, like, in order to admit that you're jealous or that you feel things, you have to admit that you have an ego. And the thing is that after you do, like, all the fucked up shit that he's done and he feels guilty about it, he doesn't want to have an ego anymore. He doesn't want to be selfish. So so if he hates himself as much as he does, and, like, he doesn't want to have an ego as a result of that. And when I say ego, I don't mean, like, like being egotistical, like, you do things only for yourself. That's I'm talking ego in the sense of, like, your own, like, sense of, of self, you know? Like, the things that you want and desire, and not necessarily in a bad way, just, like, the normal. He doesn't want to have that, because he just feels so shit about himself, about all the things that he's done. So it's difficult for him to accept all the things that he is feeling uh, regarding Buffy, because he's like, I don't want to have that. I hate myself, right? So, something that is not really fully explored in Angel, that I sort of get, is the fact that, like... That's why he's always brooding. That's why he's never, like, around. That's why he has difficulty reaching out and connecting with anyone. Because that's how he feels. And it's like an internal battle that's happening with him at all times. And, of course, Buffy doesn't understand that. Of course, no one understands that. And he's not going to open up about it because he hates himself. So, sure, that is part of the drama that's going on with Angel at all times. Buffy after this conversation might be able to understand that a little bit more so that would be really awesome to see that's that's what i want to see you know i don't want to see like teenage drama of like oh my god i saw him with another girl and i oh my god he lied to me like that's that's simple shit you know i want that this is everything that happened in my life and it's really fucked up and then she's like okay uh i'm gonna try to process that but still okay like, I, I'm, I'm still, like, down with you because I understand that you feel like shit over it and you're not going to do that again. And, like, there's, like, a talk and understanding and that's mature and I love that. So I want to see more of that, please. I got really distracted talking about Angel. Talking about fucking, like, the the, the episode promising me at the end that they were going to, like, do some fucked up shit and then Angel. And I don't know what else to talk about. Okay, no, there was something I wanted to talk about that I actually, looking back at it, I'm not sure what the fuck it was. And it was the vampire cult. Okay, I, I just watched that scene again, just to be sure. There is a scene in the vampire cult. Okay, so the vampire cult is just a bunch of, like, people that are given up on life that just want to be vampires or whatever. You know, like, sure, I understand it, you know. I've been to Tumblr, and I still kind of frequent Tumblr, and I've seen people like that, you know, the people that are just like, you know what, life sucks, and I hate myself. And I'm like, I get it, you know? 
And sometimes you're just gonna be like, hey, I want to believe in something else. And usually it's not the conventional, because that would be easy. And the conventional is often the reason for trauma and fucked up shit that happened in your life, you know? I've seen a lot of people that were fucked over by religion, for example, by like Christianity and shit. So, hey, maybe you want to hold on to something, but it's not gonna be the conventional. So you find your own thing that you wanna hold on to. So this cult of people, just a bunch of people that wanna hold on to something, uh, and they wanna hold on to this idea of vampires, you know? So you can become young and beautiful and eternal, and, and the only thing you trade off for it is you can't see the sun anymore, and people are like, that's cool, you know? Being pale as fuck is part of the aesthetic. I don't need to see the sun. I, I stay up until like 5 a.m. playing video games anyway. So of course people are gonna be like, sure, whatever, let me join to that. And it's just a bunch of dorky kids that don't really understand what the fuck is going on. And I like that when Spike show up and that lady saw him, she started immediately like fearing him because it, it, it was that moment of like, oh, I didn't think they would actually be monsters. I thought they were just gonna be like pretty boys. And we could all just become like a big horny pretty boy orgy. And then he was like, no, I'm a monster. I'm going to fucking kill you. Start sucking everyone. So that was all right. Sure. Immediately like, oh, fuck, we fucked up. I just realized I was going on a tangent. But the ringleader was the Ford. And he did it all because he was going to die anyway in a couple months due to some kind of illness, cancer, or whatever. Before I go too far from it, there is a scene where Ford starts saying something. Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. So, you play your wits against mine. Me, who commanded armies hundreds of years before you were born. Fools. Okay, that sounded like, like, that was, that was shit serious. That was, like, the most serious the show has ever been. Like, that sounded like main antagonist. And I'm, at this point, I'm just like, how many main antagonists do we have? Like, I feel like we have plenty. We have a handful. So, because, like, that was weird, and it didn't come back. So the fact that it didn't come back, it makes me think that, like, okay, they're setting shit up for later. But I'm sitting here, like, thinking, like, what was that? Like, because it sounded like an... It sounded like he, like, the, the Ford was being possessed in some way. Because he was talking, and then he immediately started talking with a different voice. However, I will say that that doesn't have to mean that he got possessed and he was talking with a different voice. That could have just been the TV playing, and we heard the TV talking. It wasn't him talking, but he was mimicking the movements. I will say, also, it could just be the fact that he memorized that speech on the TV so much that he immediately, he was like, I'm replaying it in my head, and he's saying these words. And then he started mouthing him. However, that sounds much less likely than just possession. And that sounds like main antagonist possessing or whatever. Also, he said, like, like me who commanded armies like hundreds of years before you were born. Okay, that shit's serious. That's like main antagonist shit. And you can't really see fully well who it is. I don't think it's a character we've ever seen. It didn't sound like a character we've seen. He was holding, like, someone, like a woman or something. I'm looking at it, and it, it, it's like he's holding a woman's hand, and the woman is, like, like right here. Like, he's holding her. It fucking looks like like Matt Smigelson. It looks like Hannibal Lecter, but it's blurry. I don't know who it is, but that's kind of what it looked like. But yeah, they give that person in the TV like enough of a good perspective shot in the background and talking. And the direction of that was great because he says, me who commanded armies hundreds of years before you were born. And then he cuts to black. Just, just fucking, fucking, let me, let me do it live. Just fucking pitch black. And then it just says, fools. And and it's like, oh, fuck, like, holy shit, what was that? And like, the intensity of the way that was directed makes me think like, oh shit, this is serious. And I don't know what it was. And I don't think it was just some dorky kid just just being like, oh, I memorized that speech. Who, like, what's that speech from to begin with? Who is that guy? And it sounds like that guy was possessing him. Maybe Spike didn't turn him into a vampire. Maybe the, the guy on the TV turned him into a vampire, but, but telepathically, like long distance. And like he possessed him and he turned him into a vampire and that's when when he died, he came back to life. That was Sam, wasn't he, at the end? Like, yeah, that's, that's the other thing. It was almost like a joke how he stood back up. Yeah, I think that's him. 
I think the hair is like him. It's difficult to tell because he has a, he looks like a monster, you know, with the makeup and shit, but I think that's him. So yeah, maybe, maybe the guy on the TV, Matt Smickleson looking motherfucker, he telepathically turned him into a vampire and, th and, but all, it would only trigger after he died. So then Spike killed him and then he resurrected. Okay. That's, that's good. We're following. We, we have something cooking here. What I'm saying makes no sense, but it, it is something. Anyway, so I feel like the main thing I have to carry over is that guy on the TV. I have no idea what the fuck that was. And it, it, it was given enough intensity to be like, oh, you matter. This is going to matter. This is going to be interesting. So, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what's the deal with that guy. I have to say I like the scene where Buffy talks to Ford, you know, about uh, like you have a choice. It's a bad choice. Like it, 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 it's a full of bad choices, but you still have one, you know. Um, and you're choosing mass murder, you know? There's a dog barking outside. I'm sorry about that, y'all, but I can't do nothing about it. My my neighbor has, like, seven dogs. They're all street dogs. But I really like that scene with Buffy because the way it was directed and, and the score, the score, the music that was playing while that dialogue was happening was pretty good. Um, but Buffy's absolutely right in what she's saying. It's like, it's the idea of, like, okay, I said this before, I like whenever there is some gray two characters and especially like evil characters you know like they're not doing things just because they're evil they're doing things because of their situation this guy ford explains like drops like right at the end like, that dog is going nuts um uh, explaining right here at the end like hey like i am dying and i will be dead in like half a year and my body is just gonna shrivel up and go to shit and, and she's like you still have choices like why are you doing all of this and he's like well try making a choice when you're vomiting for like 24 hours straight because the headache that you have like your brain is turning into mush it's like like there's no way you're gonna make like, like a good choice in that situation and you know what fair like actually fair i understand that he still made bad choices like right there at the ending and buffy tried to give him the benefit of the doubt i will never know if that was true uh when she was like hey like uh, i think he was playing the bad guy just so it would be easier for me but i don't know if i want to give him the benefit of the doubt because he sounded like pretty like hey turn me into vampire bro like come on like it's not like he was totally down for it that's the thing there is no reason for him to be like, yeah, everyone come feed on the entire, like, cult. You know, there's no reason for him to do that. Because he could have just told the entire, like, the entire cult, just, like, wait outside. The vampires told me for you guys to wait outside. Well, I suppose if they wait outside, then they're still gonna get killed. Yeah, the vampires are gonna fight the Slayer. But I suppose he would still give them a little bit more of a chance if he just tells them to wait outside. Because he all he has to do is just tell them, hey, the vampire told me to tell you guys to wait outside. And uh, they're going to deal with the Slayer here uh, in this, like, alone, enclosed environment. So it's like, okay, sure, uh, we'll wait outside. And then the whole shebang can happen. And maybe you can give them a little bit of a shot, a little bit more of a chance. But the guy didn't even want to do that. He was just straight up just like, no, all those people got to die. All those people needs to get mass sacrifice. And like, thing is that he realized this. Like he told Buffy, like, yeah, I trade you uh, and them for uh, me turning into vampire. That's, that, that was my only thing that I asked for. He also at the moment where he looked at them and he was like, yeah, these people are disillusioned with reality. These people have shit lives and they just kind of want to run away in some kind of weird fantasy. And you know what? Fuck them. Like, I'm not like them. I actually am doing this because I have nothing else I can do because I'm dying. So, like, you don't have to commit mass murder to do that. You know, you don't have to do that. That's, like, that, that, that's where that comes from. And that's when the character of Ford kind of falls apart to me. Um, and I don't... I don't know if the show wanted me to feel for him because it didn't. Um, like, I understand. Like, you gave me a, an explanation as to why I'm... They're not going to meet you up there with what you've explained to me, but I understand that. I just still think that that was a terrible thing to do. Um, and the fact that he doubled down on it, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, because when you're dying of cancer, it's because like those are the options, right? It's like, OK, I'm going to die of cancer or I'm going to give my body to a demon and also kill like 30 more people, including my childhood friend. 
To be fair, he didn't know that a demon was going to take his body. At, th at least I don't think he knew. Until, like, right there at the ending. But he still doubled down on it. But it could have been a situation of, like, well, I've gone too far, so now I have to do it. But that's still not great. That's, that's still just, like, bro, you still have a moment. You still have a chance. That's what Buffy said. And he still didn't take it. So, I, I do like Buffy in that scene. I'm not so sure if I can, like, hang out too much. Is that dog barking at me? Because it feels like it only barks when I start talking. But, yeah, I don't know if I feel like much or anything for this guy forward i it also didn't help that he was like immediately like mega annoying so like that's something about him that i i'm just sitting here like yeah i think he's gonna die at the end of the episode and then he did and i'm just sitting here like okay um but if anything like that's something for buffy like a lot of things just happen to buffy and that sucks that she has to carry all of this because again this guy was her childhood friend and that's something that is worth like bring it up again because i feel like it's easy to forget that because we just see him for like a couple minutes you know for like 20 minutes in the episode he just showed up and then we never see him again but for buffy this is a guy that she spent like seven years with so this is a guy that like was a big part of her childhood she even had a crush on him and shit so yeah sure wasn't easy for her but still happened so that's that's harsh that's difficult anyway um i think that that might be it for this episode. I don't know if there's much else I want to talk about. Dude, I talk about this for like 40 minutes. What the fuck? I didn't realize that I talked that much. It makes sense. I'm getting a little bit tired, so it makes sense I did. Uh, yeah, anyway. I enjoy seeing like a weird vampire call. Like, because that like expands the world a little bit more. You know? It's just like, yeah, there are weird vampire calls around that they worship vampires. I'm just sitting here like, yeah. In a world where there would be vampires, this would be a thing. In the real world, this is a thing. I'm sure I've never been to one. <laughs> I, I definitely didn't. But in, in a world where this is actually a legit real thing, it makes all the more sense that this would be a thing and that they would, like, run into, like, fucked up shit because they actively seek it. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's just something I really enjoyed. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this uh, Buffy episode. I really enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to the future of the show. If anything, because of the... Again, the ending of this episode where Buffy is like, lie to me. Again, title of the episode. Like, it, it's fun that the, the, the thing about the episode came back at the end where everyone lied. And then at the end, she's like, please just lie to me. Because it's the thing of like, the theme of like, sometimes lying is okay. Sometimes lying is even necessary. Because she understands after like hearing what Angel said, just like, you know, maybe... I didn't want to hear that, and maybe it was best if he didn't tell me that, you know, because now I know things that maybe I shouldn't, and also it was very uncomfortable for him to tell me those things. Um, that could help with the relationship moving forward, but at the same time, he doesn't have to tell you that, he didn't have to tell you that, but you pushed it, and now at this point it's like, she's talking to Giles, and Giles is like, yeah, this, this is what being an adult is like, and Buffy's like, does it get easier anytime? Please lie. Just just lie to me. And Giles was like, yes. It's so boringly easy. It's always so simple. And it's always easy to tell when anyone is good and when anyone is bad. And the good guys always win and nobody dies and everyone's happy. I'm just sitting here like, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, now you got to deliver on your promise, though. On your promise of... Shit's gonna get complicated, it's gonna be serious, and someone's gonna fucking die. And, like, you know what's gonna happen? You know what's gonna happen? And I'm gonna call it right now. And and this is based on nothing. What's gonna happen is they're gonna kill my favorite character or characters, which would right now be... Willow, Cordelia, or Giles. They're gonna kill any of those three. I would say Angel, but there's a show called Angel, so I don't think he'll die. Unless it's like a prequel. That could be. Okay. They're going to kill Willow Cordelia or Giles. Not Cordelia. Willow or Giles. Because those would be the one with the most amount of impact. They're going to kill either of those two. And I'm going to hate it. I'm going to like actively feel like shit. It's going to be Willow. I'm saying Willow. Um, because Willow is the most like innocent of all of them. And Willow never gets to be happy in the show. At least that's what the taught me so far um is gonna suck i feel like i already predicted this for this exact same reason i feel like i've said it before like i like like 10 episodes ago i looked at willow and i was like i feel like sander is not gonna realize how fucking good willow was until she's dead 
I, I said that. And now I feel like the show's going to do that. And then it's going to look at me and be like, do you like it now? Do you like how serious this got? And I'm going to like be like, yeah, but also fuck off. And that's going to be the appropriate response. I'm just going to sit here like, fuck you. But fair enough. Don't even like say anything to this comment. Like don't leave a comment underlining anything that I said and be like, oh, save those words for later. Or, oh, I can't wait until he gets to the episode. Don't say nothing. I don't want to hear anything. Okay. Because anything you say will be a spoiler. Because I'm just going to overthink it. So don't say fucking nothing. Okay. But that's what I'm sitting at this point. I'm just like, this show is going to fuck me because I asked for it. Anyway. That's going to be for this episode. Thank you so much for watching this Waffle reaction. It's getting late. I'm just going to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to go play Death Stranding. I started Death Stranding recently. It's a fucking great game. It's completely unhinged. And I'm having a great time with that. So I'm just going to do that. Anyway, see you guys some other time. Take care. See you next week. But if you don't want to wait until next week, you can watch the next two episode reactions already over at the Patreon. Check out the link in the description below. Social media, all sorts of cool stuff that I do. Thank you to all the patrons that are on here somewhere. See you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. These are fucking good, though. These are really good. Mm. Good shit. What's mind blowing about the kit yes, is that apparently they're made of themselves, you know? Like they recycle kit cats that weren't sold and they use those in order to make the paste for new kit cats. That's that's amazing. That's fantastic. And I, I cannot believe that they're so fucking good.